Hello community, so great that you are back. We have some brand new AI research paper about vision language model and we're going to talk about the visual vector space and the mapping to a textual vector space. So let's start. This is the study here, mid of September 2025, lost in embeddings, the information loss that we encounter in our current vision language model. And we have here University of Copenhagen, Microsoft and the University of Cambridge. And they tell us here, you know what, especially if we go multimodal vision language, for example, there is something crucial that is modality fusion. And modality fusion is not working right now. We do have problems. So VLMs, great, you combine here the pre-trained vision encoder with a pre-trained language model. And you see, these are not on equal footings. These are different objects, no? Because the pre-trained language model on LLM, you know, this is very expensive to build. You know? So how you do it? Easy. Theoretical, it's easy. You, know? you have a lot of sentences and then you just build a mathematical vector space, given here the semantic similarity of the sentences that mimics now the semantic closeness now in a new mathematical space, in a new vector representation. And the dimensionality of this out of synthetic vector representation can have 4,000 to 500,000 dimensions. It really depends on the complexity of your task. So you see, we are here in a high complexity domain. And as I told you, it's really expensive. So what we do? Many of those vision language models employ here just a small neural network module that is known here as a connector, or maybe you know it as a projector, to bridge here exactly the gap, the gap between the visual spaces and the textual representation spaces. And now you might say, are those spaces treated equally? And the answer is no, because we have, if you want, started here with large language model. So we invested a lot in textual representation spaces and LLMs. Now the global corporation tried to make it a little bit cheaper no, to integrate vision. So what we do, we have images, no? And then we just go with a vision encoder, whatever you like, I'm going to show you some of them. So we have a grid dimension here of the image patches, and then we have somehow to transform this to a new mathematical representation. No? And how we do this? Normally with a connector module. And this connector module or the projector transforms now the vision encoder output to match here at least the dimensionality of the text encoder. So projecting now the visual embeddings here of a particular dimension D dash to a text compatible dimension D. Now, the funny thing is D dash might be, I don't know, 1000 dimension and D might be 4000 dimension or something completely different. So you see, even from the dimensionality of the mathematical spaces, it's not working. We have to do some tricks. We have to do some new mathematical operation that we can embed this. And whenever we do something, we have to be aware we do have information loss, significant information loss. Now, the paper I just showed you, they have a beautiful idea. I say, you know, what is it? What is the simplest explanation we can find? What is a vision language model? And they say, you know what? It's simple. Yeah? We have here in the core this connector module. Yeah? Transform here the vision encoder output to match the dimensionality of the text encoder projecting here the visual embeddings to the text compatible dimensional mathematical space representation. And then, because remember in vision, we have grids of 16 times 16 pixels or 32 times 32 pixels, whatever you have, you know, it's not only the dimensionality, but you have so many other problems. So what do you do? You'd have an operation where you're just flattening out. So this is flat is now a flattener that combines now the visual and the textual embeddings into a unified linear sequence because our LLMs are linear models. So by concatenating now the flattened grid of our visual embeddings, there are two, three possibilities, with the sequence of the text embeddings. So you just concatenate them together into a huge linear sequence. So we have a new pattern and we feed it into our pattern recognition machine. Great. And this is a language model. So you see, we have now also an autoregressive language model that predicts now the probability of the next token. And we have the text embedding, the text tokens here, if you want, but also the pseudo token. 
some synthetic tokens that were generated here in a very particular mathematical space, given here the grid dimension here of the images. And you have a feeling this is not really co coherent. Huh? This is not really working smooth. There is a lot of mathematical transformation happening. I mean, just think about from 1000 to 4000 dimensional spaces. This is not really a smooth operation at all. So how do we build those connectors? Now, there are a lot of beautiful ideas here, especially in autoregressive vision language model. You might know from history, Lava. Yeah? It uses here two layer MLP to project you the image embeddings to the language model embedding space. Yeah? Preserves you the image feature length, the number of patches extracted by the image encoder. A Q1215 vision language uses here a patch merger, also a two layer MLP, to reduce here the length of the input image features. So you see, image representation of the neighboring four patches in the image of first merge and then pass through a two layer MLP to learn this, to learn a new representation, to project the image representation to the language model embedding dimension. So you see, for language and vision, we still have two different mathematical vector spaces and we are always trying to cheat somehow and because language was so expensive to build our LLMs, like, I don't know, GPT-5 or whatever, that we just want to add up here vision. We don't really want to go and start from the beginning that we have now really a complete complex vision space and a complete complex linguistic space and then we build a product space. No, we just want to make it easy and cheap. So, yeah, of course, Edifix here is very nice by hugging face here, leverages here uh, what's called a perceiver resampler here as a connector. Beautiful, you have simply a cross attention layer. Great. But you see, let's go back maybe here, you see what we do? We have here, we project to the language model embedding space. We have here to project here the image representation to the language model embedding space. So you see, we build here a mathematical vector space only for language, and then we squeeze in here the pseudo token that come here from the visual encoder. Not the perfect way to do it, but this is the way it's done today. So therefore, we do have an information loss. And now here, this study set out, we want to quantify here, maybe for the first time, this particular information loss at the connector module at our projector. So how we do this? They said, you know, we have two simple possibilities. The first method is simply here. We just look here at the structural information of the mathematical space, we look at the structural information in the semantic embedding close by. So what we do, we have a particular vector, we say, okay, let's go and have a look in the epsilon environment. And then we find a lot of images within this epsilon environment. And now we compare each image representation, the k nearest neighbors before and after the projection or the connector module. Very easy. Immediately you see the differences. And then they say, okay, this is here for the structural deformation of the mathematical space. But what about here the nitty gritty, you know, the absolute fine grain detail? This is here just for a huge body distortion here of space time continuum. But let's go here if you have to identify a single number. We have to go much more in detail. And therefore they said, hey, you know what? We reconstruct now the original image from the projected representation. So, something that you know from diffusion, no problem at all. Let's see how good is now this reconstruction. So, the K nearest neighbor overlap ratio, called CNOR, <laughs> is now a particular indicator. And let's have a look at this. So, here we have lava, the image embedding. So, we have at first our query image. So, this is here our standard vector. And now before we do the projection, this image is embedded, if you want here, in a projected mathematical space close to those images here on the top line. But after we have now this mathematical operation that we map it now in a different mathematical space, where here the language representation is the dominant feature, we see that this image is now close to other images that are now defined here by the second line, the second row here. So you see, 
there are some images that overlap. Now you understand the overlap ratio. But there are some complete new images, like here's some mushrooms that are not represented here in the original absolute environment here of the visual embedding. And here, bees, very nice here. See, we have different image embeddings here. We are mapping to a different distorted space time, if you want, here in our mathematical space. Let's have a look at Edefix 2. Let's go with a different vision language model. Yeah? Again, what are the closest images to our query image? Here, top row, top line, you see here. Okay, this is it. Interesting. So here in the background, some fruits. Great. So we do have also an overlap, as you see here. But look, the rest of the images are completely different. So after the projection, we are somewhere else in the space. So we have projected this particular visual information, this visual data, in a complex different region of the space. Now this can now induce a lot of problems, and we will see this induces the error and the losses that we encounter in the vision language model. Now, and then they went with a QN 2.5 vision language here. And this is now a little bit interesting because look, at the original embedding here with a Christmas tree and with a family and with a, I don't know, ship beyond the ocean, that's a little bit strange, no? But after the projection, you are much closer now to the semantic, uh, let's say, term of fruits, no? Oranges, no? So interesting. Now, the projection of the visual data into the linguistic data space brings it indeed closer here to the generic term. So, GNOR reflects now the structural information loss during this projection, this connector operation, indicating how well the local geometry relationship among the image embeddings are preserved or are not preserved and are distorted. However, it does not identify the loss of the fine-grained visual features if you really want to identify single letters or single characters in your image no? at the patch level. Okay, so what it did, it took some evaluation data sets that are public and familiar and whatever, great. And of course, for the second term, for the reconstruction now, they also said, you know, we have to build here some particular reconstruction model. So for lava, it was rather similar. Easy, they went through here with a simple three-layer MLP. And for Edefix and Q, when they implemented this here with a transformer encoder, 16 layer, 16 head in 2K dimension vector representation. Great. Now, what are the results? There are a lot of additional information, but let's have a look at the end results. The neighborhood overlay ratio reflects now the structural information loss that happened here with the connector, with the projection in a vision language model the loss in the semantic representation space. So let's have a look. Here we have color encoded in blue, we have lava in orange, we have Edefix 2, and then in green we have the QN 2.5 vision language for different benchmark. But you see, in general, you can see blue, lava, and Edefix 2, they are about an overlap ratio 0 0.5, no, around 50%. So we projected these images now in a new part of the space in a new area of the space and we only have a 50% overlap with familiar images while q and 2.5 loses here nine, almost 90% of the neighborhood images the neighborhood ranking information so you see with this operation of a projector we have a significant neighbor reordering across all models so you could ask now, is this what we want in a vision language model that suddenly the visual information is maximized, distorted to 50%, 90%. So this is exactly where we do have, where we encounter the information loss in our vision language models. And of course, I told you the second is also the reconstruction loss. If we try to reconstruct here, this back here from the projected images, and you see the loss is also in relevant patches negatively affects the performance of Lava and Edefix. And with QN 2.5, it's an interesting story. You find here the details in the study itself. Now, in general, the authors tell us we do find two critical aspects of this information loss in our vision language model. 
At first, we have a structural shift of a global semantic relationship shown by a 40-60% to 60% divergence in the nearest neighbor rankings. So we project this into complete unknown subspaces here. And the divergence is up to 60%. So, wow. And for the patch level reconstruction loss, this negatively impacts here the captioning performance in general and also explains here the model failures if you're looking for fine-grained visual grounded question answering like, hey, identify the three numbers that you see in these images. So you see, this explains quite a lot. We have a global effect here in the complete distortion here, if you want, of our time space-time construct. And then even if you go from the finer details, you see here, patch level reconstruction loss is significant. So in general, it tells us it is the connectors. It is those particular networks, neural networks, that substantially distort here the local geometry of our visual representation, of our visual embedding. The authors tell us, you know, two key properties of an effective connector. If we build the next generation, do the following. We need a connector that preserves or improves the semantic representation of the images much better than today. And it has to preserve the visual information that is most relevant to the text context in new ways. So therefore, they said, our findings here could guide further improvements in vision language model connectors. If you want to read a little bit uh, from a different perspective, I found this paper here really interesting. It is from 2024, but really worth reading. This is from Hugging Face and the Sorbonne. And they say, hey, what matters when building vision language model? Yeah? And the answer already in 2024 was, and no surprise, it is the connector modules that fuse here the vision and the text modalities in their impact on the inference efficiency, plus, of course, the multimodal training procedures and its impact on the training stability. So you see, we are more or less at the same level where we were here in May 2024. We have pushed a little bit the boundaries, but we have not really come up with a complete new way of a connector that has really a high performance efficiency. I hope you enjoyed it. It would be great to see you in my next video.